G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It is the day before the draft and then it is finally over. Well, and there's a second day of the draft, but regardless, today we are going to have a look at Cal Toomey's mock draft and also compare it with Fox Footy's mock draft because it's interesting to see in which places they diverge and the good thing about both these mocks, uh, in particular Toomey, he's a fairly well-connected man. You can get the impression that uh, a lot of the decisions he makes in his mock draft are based on some level of information. And in this particular draft, it feels like we've had less information, less rumor about various picks than ever before. It's going to be so hard to predict. Toomey in particular usually has a pretty good hit rate with his mock drafts. So I always tune in. Except for that time in 2020 where I think that uh, North Melbourne were expected to take Logan McDonald. They took Will Phillips and then I had this massive flow on effect to the rest of the draft and his mock draft that year from memory was massively inaccurate but generally speaking he's got a good finger on the pulse with this stuff so we're going to have a look at that and also have a look at what Fox Footy is saying. I've said this before I wouldn't be surprised if Toomey's mock this year is not super accurate and through no fault of his own I just think the even nature of it and also the unpredictability of all the trades that we could see happen tomorrow we haven't heard a whole heap we've heard a little bit of innuendo north and Adelaide and it's just getting so hard to predict what's going to happen but nonetheless you can still get a good feel for what clubs are thinking and uh, there's really good information in both mock drafts so let's get into it although before we do if you could help me hit my goal of hitting 33,000 subscribers by the first day of the draft that would be outstanding it has been a long journey between the trade period and the draft and I've done my best to cover it as best as possible I've done heaps of mock drafts not all of them have been received well uh, but I've done individual videos you know profiling draft prospects as well which I'm hoping will still be useful for some time until the start of the next season basically so if you could help me out and consider subscribing if you get something from this channel I'd really appreciate it we're also going to be live on both days of the draft so by all means come and join all right we're going to go pick by pick and just look at uh, who he's got and, and the general reasoning we don't need to go into a profile of every player we've kind of done that and as we go through I will also compare it pick by pick to what Fox Footy is saying in their justification so Sam Lawler pick one this one has been the expected pick for some time if not him it has really come down to two Lawler or Finn O'Sullivan. The Tigers are still keen on O'Sullivan, and he's the other significant contender, having spoken with Richmond on Monday. So again, that could, in theory, be part of a play to try and get picked to. I don't really expect Richmond will get picked to in this year's draft as it currently stands. But that, that could be another explanation for why they would meet Finn O'Sullivan, as opposed to taking him outright. But who knows? What's Fox Footy said about the same pick? They also have Sam Law, and it says in the uh, mix slash trade watch, the popular alternative is Finn O'Sullivan, who they've been strongly considering. Jagger Smith played three games for their VFL side, and Smith has been in the pick one mix. However, it seems to be a long time ago now that Jagger Smith was a real pick one contender. It seems that both Toomey and Fox Footy agree Sam Law is going to go pick one. Now, pick two is an interesting one, and this is going against a little bit of what I've been running with in my predictions, in my mock drafts, uh, where I thought they might go Alex Toru. Toomey says that in this scenario, and he hasn't predicted any trades, he's just assuming that North Melbourne have pick two. He reckons they're going to go with the best available midfielder in Finn O'Sullivan. The Roos have had talks about moving this pick, with Adelaide looming it as their main trade contender if they slide back. It looks unlikely now, so that's interesting. South Australian mid, uh, midfielder Sid Draper is very much in the discussion. I have also heard through the grapevine North really likes Sid Draper. I don't know if it would be enough to take him at pick two, though. Sam Lawler is the other key candidate. Okay, so he's just basically named every contender there. However, he is saying North Melbourne will take Finn O'Sullivan if they hold this pick, uh, and he says it's unlikely a trade gets done. What's Fox Footy say? Fox Footy have interestingly also said the same thing, um, and these are obviously done very separately. The Kangaroos for months have been linked to Gippsland power high flyer Alex Toru with rivals believing North would be prepared to trade down from pick two, although not too far down the order. If the Roos traded, it would most likely be with Adelaide pick four, but only if the Crows could find a future second round pick from another club. Yeah, so I haven't double checked this, but I think Adelaide hold heaps of thirds next year, but no second because of a deal with Peatling. So that will be tough. As it says here, scouts will believe it'll be tough. So, so both of Toomey and Foxwoody believe Finn O'Sullivan pick two to North Melbourne. That's very interesting. Toomey has now gone with Jagger Smith to Carlton at pick three, which is interesting. I've generally been seeing that it's going to be Finn O'Sullivan or Sid Draper. This is the first time I've really seen this connection. Um, nonetheless, it's not you know a bad pick on, on talents or anything like that. The Blues have taken senior coach Michael Voss to meet with Smith, Harvey Langford, Sid Draper, Sam Lawler, and Finn O'Sullivan in recent times for follow-up meetings. Okay, so let's just do diligence there. Their player comes from that group, not you know massive shock there. 
In the likelihood of uh, Finn O'Sullivan is off the board, then it is views as a race of two, Smith and Draper. So yeah, of course, in this scenario, Finn O'Sullivan is not available to them. So then is it Smith or is it Draper? I, I probably would have predicted Draper, but again, I'm not connected. You know, I'm just a guy making a punt. That's interesting for sure. What is Fox Footy saying? They are agreeing. So, so far we have a consensus top three, uh, which is interesting. Both of these platforms, as in afl.com.au, Kaltumi and Fox Footy, presumably have some sort of sources. Some sources suggest that if Foss is still on the board, the Blues wouldn't hesitate to pick him. That's probably been what uh, has been the, the group think for some time now. Fellow midfield guns, Sid Draper and Harvey Langford also have interest from Carlton in this pick. Okay, so either way, whatever way you slice it, they're, they're saying Jagger Smith. I might, I would have thought Sid Draper. It'd be very interesting if both of these selections are wrong, but we'll see. I've also read in recent times the Crows were considering to trade up to pick two to get Jagger, which is also something I didn't see coming. So there you go. So we move to the Adelaide Crows now and uh, Toomey has them getting Sid Draper. The Crows have been strongly linked to Harvey Langford. That's something that I thought made sense for a little while. That's something I just set out of my own opinion. I didn't know they were actually linked to him. If Jagger Smith was available, then he would be a strong contender as would Finn O'Sullivan. Okay, that makes sense. Could I just say, Crow's logo looks all right in that particular context here. I don't mind it. However, Fox is disagreeing here with Toomey and they've diverged here. So this is the first different pick. They've got Harvey Langford at this selection, leaving Sid Draper still on the board. Yep, Harvey Langford over Sid Draper, but there's much, so much to like about this big body midfield star Blah, blah, blah. We already know that he's a good player. In the mix slash trade watch, the Crows are still keen as the most likely trade partner for North Melbourne should the latter want to trade down from pick two, but the Crows would likely have to find a future second round pick. Okay, so that's the second source we have saying future second round pick is probably the price and therefore it seems unlikely. We should probably see the Crows take Jagger Smith at pick two. Yeah, this is something that's come to light like since my last mock draft. This is where Toomey has the bid for Levi Ashcroft going. Um, yeah, that makes sense. We don't really need to analyze that too much. We know Levi Ashcroft is a, is a gun player uh, and a pick five is an absolute bargain. And I think from memory, yes, pick five, Brisbane Lions, Fox Footy agrees. So that, that, that's interesting that, um, you know, perhaps that's based on some sort of knowledge that a bid is going to come as late as pick five. That's an absolute win for Brisbane. Now at pick six, we have Toomey saying that Melbourne would take Harvey Langford here, but of course Fox has him unavailable. So if Langford goes to the Crows to pick ahead, then Alex Toru looks like the next leading contender for the Melbourne pick. I remember putting him to the Ds in a mock draft. I think it was my second most recent one, if I'm not mistaken. And Fox sort of agrees with this in a sense. So they obviously don't have Harvey Langford going to Melbourne, but as Toomey says, if Harvey Langford's off the board, then Toru will go to Melbourne. So that's, that's interesting. That's a, a doubling down on the, the interest from Melbourne to Alex Toru. It says, if North Melbourne takes Toro at two or four, then it's likely two of Harvey Langford, who has been linked to Melbourne, Finn O'Sullivan less likely, or Sid Draper. So we have some sort of uniformity between the, the two Melbourne picks. Toomey obviously says, if Langford is available, it'll be him. But in this scenario, in Fox's scenario, he's not available. They both agree that Toro would be the pick in that case. Josh Smiley gets to Richmond. According to Cal Toomey, the Tigers have traveled to see Bo Allen in recent days and could look to get him in case they don't see him getting to picks 10 and 11. That makes sense. Fox Footy agrees. It says, despite the Tigers' a long interest in uh, Smiley, this could be a big pivot point of the draft. So it's interesting that they both both have Smiley getting to him. I think in previous mocks, I've had him getting to St Kilda, but I have seen the Smiley to Richmond connection for some time. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Toomey has Travalia here as St Kilda's first pick, which is interesting. I think, you know, in the past I've had Travalia as one of St Kilda's two picks, uh, but I've also had Smiley being their first one. And now in both mock drafts now that we're looking at, Smiley's off the table. So they go on Travalia first. The Saints could make their bid on Leo Lombard. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, midfielders like Sid Draper or Harvey Langford squeezes through in this scenario. Neither of them are available. St. Kilda do have the next pick, but we'll see what Fox had next. They had Sid Draper. So that's a little bit of a slide. My personal opinion, Sid Draper's too good to go at pick eight, but that is just my own opinion, and it is an even draft pool. The sense among the industry is St. Kilda will pounce on the top-end prospect that slips out of the top five midfielders. In this scenario, it's Draper, but in other scenarios, it could be Harvey Langford. So that makes sense. That's usually the, the way I've seen it going. I haven't had Sid Draper sliding into St. Kilda's picks in any scenario, I don't think. But uh, in this case, they'll say if it's not Draper, it'll be Harvey Langford, who is someone I had getting to the Saints with their other one. This is where Toomey has a bid for Leo Lombard. Like, that's about right. That's more or less where I've had him in recent times. I think it dropped him a little bit further down um, and he joins the club with the Death Star as their logo. Then interestingly, 
Toomey has Toru getting to the Saints at pick 10. So that's a, a reasonable slide. That makes sense. It doesn't seem like there's too many suitors for him inside you know, those top handful of picks. If it's not North Melbourne, they're going to take Finno Sullivan in this scenario. And Melbourne you know, end up with Harvey Langford, I think, in Toomey's scenario. So if it's not them, it'll be St Kilda. Um, but interestingly, it, it, they had him getting Trevalier as well. So the Saints not really getting a midfielder at all. Uh, they go for a running defender and an intercepting tall defender as well. Now, Trialia could be a midfielder, but I wonder if this is the desired outcome for St. Kilda here. I mean, the talent's right. They're both good players. But to not pick a midfielder with either of those two picks, let me know in the, in the comments what you think, St. Kilda fans. Fox Footy also agreed that pick nine is where the bid for Leo Lombard comes. So we'll keep scrolling down and they take Toby Trevalier. So St. Kilda end up with Sid Draper and Trevalier in this scenario. So which do you prefer? St Kilda fans, would you rather Sid Drape and Toby Trevalier or Toby Trevalier and Alex Toru? Melbourne pounce on Bo Allen. I have thought for a while that he would get to Bo, uh, to the D's. I did <laughs> ambitiously put him um, the pick before, as in their first pick in my last mock draft, which was a bit of a bold claim. But Toomey th thinks he'll get through to their second selection. There's a chance Alex Toru gets through to this point. Well, that's true. Like if, if the this situation plays out and St Kilda, like I said, didn't want to not take a midfielder at all, maybe Toru does get through to pick 11, which would be interesting. There has been now a link to Xavier Lindsay will be strongly considered this selection, uh, which is interesting. I had not seen any link to the Melbourne footy club before. And Joe Berry are also likely in the mix. Another interesting call there. He has been invited to the first night, Joe Berry. This is where Fox Footy agrees. Uh, in this scenario, Melbourne takes Alex Toro with its first pick. We have the Demons selecting Allen with their second pick. So pairing up a uh, dynamic intercepting defender with a dynamic athletic midfielder. Uh, there also is a link to Xavier Lindsay here, which is interesting, and a key forward, Harry Armstrong. Uh, Toomey has Xavier Lindsay coming off the board at pick 12. As an Eagles fan, this makes me sad. He's, he's the one I'm sort of hoping gets to West Coast. In terms of the other midfielders of this group, there's a possibility the Tigers try their luck getting Josh Marley through these picks. That seems ambitious from an outsider looking in. Otherwise, Bo Allen is a real contender if available. Murphy Reed and Joe Berry. So again, so Joe Berry is now continuing the link to teams a little bit higher than I'd previously seen. And interestingly, Fox agrees. Richmond pick 12, Xavier Lindsay. So it seems my hopes of him getting to the Eagles might be all but dashed. Bo Allen or Toby Javali are still on the board. The Tigers would likely pounce. So in this scenario, I think, do Richmond still have a selection left? I think they do in both scenarios. So they haven't taken any tools yet. They've gotten the midfielder, who in my opinion on value, like I, I think on talent anyway, this is a good pick for him. I don't think this is too early. This is where he has a bid for Isaac Kako falling. And I think Fox had the same thing. Yes, uh, interesting. So there's a consensus on which teams will bid on Isaac Kako and Leo Lombard. Uh, one thing that's interesting, um, Essendon traded out a pick nine so that it would happen before a Kako bid. So if this happens in real time, they've kind of traded out that pick for no reason. So Richmond take their first tall at pick 14. It's Job Shanahan. He's a bit of a bolter um, and a player that I've sort of locked into lately because there was a link to West Coast, which is strange. Uh, but it says, if not him, Harry Armstrong. So it'd be one of those two. Harry Armstrong has been the probably generally speaking the consensus number one ranked key forward in this draft but Shanahan definitely has his fans and, and you know 195 centimeters now I, I think he might have been a little bit shorter than that at the start of the year as you'd expect but I think him getting to that 195 mark and his proven performance in the in the VFL this year I think it's would be a good selection for Richmond to be honest what a fox say I think they have Harry Armstrong so Either way, both mock drafts say this is where Richmond take their first toll. Um, they do need to keep forward, and perhaps uh, I think this would be a good move. If it was me, I'd go Shanahan. Interestingly, he's listed as 193 here. I'm not sure if that's accurate. I'm sure he's 195. Aha, the pick you've all been waiting for. West Coast select Murphy Reed in this scenario. So if not him, Bo Allen, yeah, we, we kind of made that assumption because he's West Australian. Uh, he's probably not going to be there. Trevalier and Lindsay would also be in the mix. They also go tall with Harry Armstrong, Job Shanahan, or Jack Whitlock. I really hope that's not based on knowledge of, you know, what we're going to do. I think West Coast historically are a little bit hard to predict. Maybe it's just because they're all the way in Western Australia, and Toomey's naturally would have, you know, less connections, I presume. Uh, but to me, it would be kind of wild to go Harry Armstrong, Job Shanahan, or Jack Whitlock. I talked about it on True Eagle the other day. Shanahan is a key back, maybe, but it would still be a weird move, so I hope that's not right. Tash Hotton is another player that Eagles are understood to be considering closely. So let's say, what uh, what do Fox Footy say? They say Tash Hotton. 180 centimeters. Again, I think that's a little bit shorter than every other place I've seen him listed. I think he's about 182, um, but interesting. Rival clubs believe the Eagles will target the best available talent rather than needs with their first selection. Lindsay and Trevalier are the other popular links to us. Otherwise, it looms as a tight call between Joe Berry, Murphy Reed, Taj Hotton. Uh, Joe Berry, I've seen a few articles linking them him to this pick. 
and another link to Job Shanahan here. I do like Job Shanahan, I just think it wouldn't make a lot of sense. In my opinion, my preference here is Taj Hotton for West Coast pick, and uh, I did read like uh, somewhere else, I think it might be in, at the back end of Toomey's thing. Oli Hotton, uh, Taj's older brother who just got delisted by St Kilda, might be a train on player with West Coast. If that is the case, if West Coast is sounding him out, it means they're quite serious potentially about Taj Hotton. So maybe this is now who I think we're gonna select just based on what is being said. Port Adelaide take Harry Armstrong in the scenario. If Jack Whitlock was there alongside Armstrong, it would be a tight call. This is interesting. I, I did a, well, I did the mock draft recently and I originally had Harry Armstrong to Port and I talked myself out of it. I just don't need, no, if they would pick a key forward, it would purely just be, Best, best available here, in their opinion anyway. Uh, I'm a little bit skeptical here, but I'll, I'll open my ears up to you Port Adelaide fans, what you think. Uh, we'll, we'll see what Fox says, because I think they have Job Shanahan here. So you just flip Richmond's 14, uh, they took Shanahan in Toomey's, and Port ended up with Armstrong, and it's the reverse in this scenario. So doubling down on Port going a key forward. Many sources think, believe they're looking at a key forward, particularly after the retirement of Charlie Dixon, and the fact most of the pools best tall goal kickers are in their range. So that, that is true. Port entered the draft at this period where there's a lot of key forwards and tall targets. So I'm not sure, I'm not convinced. But that being said, I do think Job Shanahan could be a special player. So similar to West Coast, like I think Armstrong, no, Shanahan for some reason, like I feel like I could be talked into it. Maybe I just like him more as a prospect. Fremantle going, getting Joe Berry here. I think that kind of makes sense. Uh, close to best available, Vic Country Boy. And, uh, you know, stylistically probably suits what Fremantle need. Uh, they've just been linked to a lot of the same names here. Murphy, Reed, Taj Houghton, uh, getting a little repetitive here. It's just going to be a case of who's left. Whereas, uh, yeah, Fox Sports also agree that Joe Berry as a, a medium to small forward, high half forward, will be in the mix there. Job Shanahan, Jonty Fuller also linked, which is interesting. And of course, there's going to be the obligatory link to Bob Allen, the West Australian prospect. GWS taking Matt Whitlock here would be a surprise. So... They do think he's gonna. They're gonna go tall. Um, if not him, his twin brother Matt will be in the mix, as will John T. Fall and Job Shanahan. So the Shanahan one makes sense because he's is somewhat local, um, represented the Allies. GWS do pick a little bit different. This would be quite early for Jack Whitlock. Um, I think Shanahan would be a great fit for them, and I do think they need a tall. It's just a little bit early, earlier than I would expect. So who do Fox have him? They have John T. Fall again. Another early leap. I don't think GWS are shy about taking players earlier than expected. We've seen that with Phoenix Gothard last year. Um, I do think they might be hoping for Job. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, a deal here between GWS and St Kilda and GWS poten potentially get you know one of St Kilda's earlier picks and take Job Shanahan earlier than expected. I think that is potentially on the cards here. GWS doubling down with Taj Hotton at the next selection. The Giants can spring surprises, but the players linked to them around this part uh, of the draft are Joe Berry, Ollie Hannaford, and Jesse Detoli. They might not desperately need a small forward per se, but all that group can do other things. Yeah, that's true. I feel like GWS are almost overstocked for smalls. I don't know if this is just a game plan thing that they really prioritize having quality smalls at ground level, particularly in the forward half. Darcy Jones, Toby Green, obviously, Brent Daniels, and Phoenix Goddard, they've just drafted. It's, uh, it'd be an interesting play if they took one of those smalls, but Taj Hotton makes sense on talent. GWS here take Jasper Alger. I, I'm not 100% sure how to say that, but I've seen that name pop up a little bit. I'm not going to lie, a little bit ignorant to him, but he's compared to Toby Green. Is that uh, is that just the lazy comparison there? I'm not too sure, uh, but that would be an interesting one. And again, kind of fits the bill of being a little bit surprising, a little bit early for GWS, but they are good at what they do. The Bulldogs getting Cooper Hines. Um, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Clubs believe the Bulldogs would swoop if Murphy Reed was available and Joe Berry also in that basket. So that's pretty consistent with what's being said. And the Bulldogs to Mur Murphy Reed here. I actually agree with this. I think that's who I had as pick 20 in my last mock draft. I think Murphy Reed might just slip past the interstate clubs and get to the next Victorian pick. So I don't think he'll get taken by West Coast. I agree. Pick 20 Western Bulldogs makes sense. Richmond take Jesse Dottoli now. So they're starting to deviate um, from, from midfielders. They've taken a tall forward. At this stage, Richmond are expected to start getting some seriously tempting offers for picks. That makes sense. I, I, I'd be surprised if Richmond take all eight picks. My personal opinion, I think they'll trade one into the future at least. Fox also running with pick 21, Jesse Dottoli. So interesting that they're both aligned with their Cooper Hines, uh, Auger, 
if that's how you say it. It's not the fence post hole digger. That's an auger. Uh, superseded by Taj Houghton. I'd be surprised if Taj Houghton gets there, but interestingly, he's starting to open up. Names like Harry Oliver, that would be quite early for Oliver. Sydney go and Jonty fall, according to uh, Cal Toomey. Again, this depends so much on like which tools are taken in which, which order, and is Whitlock available? I, I'd be surprised if Whitlock's gone already, to be honest. Um, but I have had Jonty fall to Sydney in one of my mock drafts, so I can't really argue with that too hard. And Luke Trainer is mentioned here, as is Job Shanahan. I'll be surprised if Shanahan's still there on the board at that time. What about you, Fox? They have Sam Marshall. Okay, we'll, we'll skip that. That's exactly where I had him in, in the last couple of mocks, I think. Uh, and they have Jack Whitlock to taken here. So again, the, the implication is Sydney on the market for a tall forward. Uh, they'll take the best one available. Fox thinks Whitlock still be there. Toomey obviously does not agree with that. Fox also says Jonty Fall might be on the cards here, or even Noel Mraz. Uh, yeah, again, the, the tall back one is an interesting one for Sydney. They do have Joel Cochran as an academy prospect. They took Patrick Snell last year. I'm not too sure how willing they are to draft another key back with one of these two picks, but it remains to be seen. Richmond taking Matt Whitlock. So one of the other tools may be preferred and still available. Again, yeah, it's a little bit hard to tell at this point. Thomas Sims or Harry O'Farrell uh, is play are players that they've looked at. Those would be quite, that would be quite early for both of those players at this current point in time, but it is an even draft pool, so we will get surprises. And Fox have Harry Oliver getting to Richmond here as well. So Cooper Hines and Ollie Hannaford are considered some other contenders. A little bit early, but again, diversifies the picks that they've already taken as a smaller medium defender. Toomey says Harry Oliver to GWS at the next pick. Okay, so this consensus, both agree he's a top 25 pick. Again, another link to Jasper Olga and Jack O. I'm going to run with that pronunciation. I've seen both and I don't want to take any risks. So I'm going to say Jack O for now. <laughs> and GWS take Ollie Hannaford. Damn it, I love that Ollie Hannaford. He's got, I think he's going to be such a jet. And uh, I would love him to get to West Coast second selection, uh, given I don't think he really will get taken at their first selection at this point, even though I did say that in the mock. Um, but it was a little bit more hope than anything else. Giants could opt for medium defender Harry Oliver. Okay, so again, consensus, there's the same sorts of players linked at these certain picks. Pick 25, Toomey has a bid for Sam Marshall. Five and 25 would be an amazing result for Brisbane in terms of matched bids. And Sydney take Ollie Hannaford here. Great selection if he's available there. Um, I've had to totally take in buy them in the last few mocks I've done. I think that makes sense. In this scenario, Hannaford's available to Tolly is not. So great result. Fox says Cooper Hines here. That'd be interesting. I don't know if, if I'm Sydney, if I'm picking a midfielder or at least not by priority. I think in an even pool, they're going to afford to go some general forwards, some general defenders, uh, and certainly maybe a key forward is something I've been running with as well. Um, but yeah, the links to Luke Trainer, Ollie Hannaford to Tolly and uh, Olga are there as well. Speak of the devil, Olga here is here. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, is it Alga? Alga? I don't know. I, uh, I should probably look that up. But Richmond is a club that has looked at Cooper Hines. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Richmond looking for a big bodied midfielder. In this scenario, they do have Smiley though. And uh, both mocks have Richmond getting Matt Whitlock, although obviously at a different pick in the draft. So that makes sense. I think Richmond can look to add a few tolls, particularly one in the defensive half at this point of the draft. Okay, so that's the conclusion of Fox Footy's mock draft. They only did the first 27 picks. Toomey keeps going for three more. And we're up to Richmond here. This is where they think Luke Trainer. When I say they, I mean Toomey. This will be the first pick of night two. So we're going to have a very long day one of the draft. It's going to go for 27 selections. What did it go for last year? Was it 29? I think West Coast had the first pick of day two and took Archer Reed. Uh, so this will be similarly quite large. Uh, but Luke Trainer here, this is a good value selection. There's also a link here to Alex Dodson. My personal take is if, if Richmond had taken all eight selections, I think it's probably a good opportunity to add a ruck. I don't know if it's one that they need to take as a means of priority, but I'm not saying necessarily it'd even be better than Luke Trainer as such. But I think with one of their picks, Alex Dodson does make sense. There's no guarantee Luke Trainer will still be available at this selection. Uh, we move down, Christian Moraes. This is a play that I've linked to the Bulldogs myself because I just think it would be a good fit. Obviously, no inside information there. And this is where Toomey has Moraes going. A bit of an outside wingman, goal-kicking wingman, can play a little bit forward. Links to Hannaford, to Tolley. Yeah, we could probably have guessed that. And then finally, Ned Bowman. This one is a little bit out of left field. Uh, I had not seen this link before and I don't know a whole lot about him. I will say that as a medium-sized forward, it doesn't really fit us. However, I'm the guy who put Ollie Hannaford as our first pick in my last mock draft. So a bit hypocritical, I suppose. Um, I'd imagine we're probably just going to go 
with the player that we think is the best available at this point. It says Luke Trading will also be in consideration if they don't go tall with the first bit. Yeah, you'd imagine West Coast don't go tall with both picks. That would be a bizarre result. So there's a little bit of club by club stuff here from Toomey. We don't need to go through it all. Uh, interesting point here is they'll likely use two selections. One of those is going to be Tyler Welsh. Um, they might just take him themselves. If, uh, if he gets all the way through. Brisbane, it does suggest that they might be taking at least a third selection after Marshall and Ashcroft. I wasn't sure if they'd bow out with a couple of tolls like Nichols or Barrett linked to them. As for Carlton, they obviously got the Camprioli twins. Now there's a suggestion that uh, they're hoping that 38 gets used before a bid comes in, and that seems to be a possibility. It does sound like Lucas might go a little bit later than that. Oh, it says, while well, Lucas may not receive a bid. Um, so they'll end up with both of those boys, no worries. It's just a matter of seeing whether, you know, someone like a Harry O'Farrell, potentially, who has a natural link to Carlton there. I think it's his dad works for them. I forget exactly. Is he their lawyer? I've, I've read something about that. Um, so it, they could go that route. Um, they should be safe, I would have thought, with Ben and Lucas getting bid on a little bit later. Collingwood, I'd imagine, go best available tall with their first selection, says Noel Moraz. That would be an amazing result, I think, if he lasted that long, which is possible. He does have the injury concern with that foot injury that could lead him to slide. Uh, but I'd imagine uh, Collingwood should definitely pick him. Clancy Dennis is another one I've seen them linked to. Uh, good player, in my opinion. Essendon here, Isaac Kako is obviously the player that they want to get or they will get. Um, past that, you know, there's been some suggestion they'll trade back in. That doesn't seem to be covered in here. Uh, Hamish Davis is a contender. That all depends on where their pick falls, their next pick falls. But if they trade back in, I still think they could be one of the clubs looking at like a Shanahan or an Armstrong. Uh, we'll see. Fremantle have nominated Jaron Carr. I didn't know that. I've actually met Jaron. Good for him. Good for him. Other than that, uh, not a whole heap of business expected here from Fremantle in terms of trades. Like there was a suggestion here. Fremantle has looked at trading up by packaging its first two picks. Interesting. Whilst rivals have thrown future first round picks at them to see if they will trade out of 14. I'd imagine that doesn't happen. Uh, I think Fremantle have missed the last couple of first rounds and they won't trade... Uh, their future first round, I'd imagine they're still thinking about Chad Warner. Geelong is an interesting one here. I've seen a continual link to Alex Dodson. Um, however, you know, they've drafted Mitch Edwards and Toby Conway in recent drafts. So that one surprises me. They obviously really rated him and they feel like they need a third ruck on the list. Um, I suppose it's not like he's taken in the first round, right? So they'll be hoping he either slides or will have to trade up. Um, I wonder if they trade their future first to get into the top 25. I, I don't know if they'd be doing that as such, but it's surprising. That's a, that's a pretty surprising link to a Ruckman in this year's draft. Gold Coast, it does suggest they might use another pick as well. Um, after, obviously, Lombardi, you'd expect them to take at least two, wouldn't you? They do have future first round picks. They do have an academy player next year. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to go about that. But perhaps it's later into the draft that they trade in. GWS, likely to use four selections. That's probably going to be these four, you'd think. They could, in fact, trade like two of them up and then use 56. 56 could still be a decent pick in this year's draft. They do have an academy ruckman in Logan Smith. So you can rule them out, taking Alex Dodson, you'd think. Hawthorne pretty late in the draft or relatively late. I think the third latest team to enter the draft this year, uh, linked to Hamish Davis and, and Christian Moraes. So nothing really concrete there. Melbourne likely to use three picks is interesting. They do have an NGA prospect in Ricky Mentha. I don't know too much of these other guys other than Archer Day Wicks. Uh, but five and nine will be their focus. And then presumably they'll use one at the back end. North Melbourne, uh, again, I, like I've seen links elsewhere that they might try their future first to get into this round as well. So they might just, you know, use Finn O'Sullivan at pick two, uh, if you believe Toomey and Fox fo uh, footy there and then maybe trade their future first for the best available tall forward. That's probably the way I see it going, and they'll likely use three selections. Uh, I'm not sure if River Stevens will be you know, taken in the, in the draft. I'm not sure. Port Adelaide is one of the hardest ones to, uh, to assess how they're going to go, in my opinion. Um, I've had Port fans tell me they don't want a tall forward, and others have told me I'm crazy for thinking they don't need one. Um, I, I'd imagine, based on all the noise, they're probably going to pick at least one, whether it's their first selection, like a Armstrong or a... Shanahan that remains to be seen, but if not, then there's a link to Thomas Sims there with their second pick, which is 29. That might become about 31 on the night. Richmond, we've pretty much exhausted all the things they're going to do there. Um, no real surprises there. They might just trade. Uh, it says likely to use seven or eight, so that implies you know either packaging two to move up. Probably less likely, I'd say, move one into the future is probably at least something they're going to do. St Kilda, five or six selections. Again, we could see them trade back and just use those four plus you know whatever extras they get. 
few NGAs. They've got Elwood Peckwood. Oh, man, I remember his dad playing. That's how I know I'm getting old. Sydney, we've talked about their first two selections. Angus Clark is potentially uh, someone they could get later on. That would be a good value selection, good running defender. They've done a medical on David Cunningham and Ben Payton. I did not realize that. So there you go. Maybe they sign these guys and, and then Joel Cochran as well. Uh, I imagine there will be a bid on him. As for West Coast, they've got Malachi unlikely to be bid on. So that's a good result. Get, get him as a Cat B rookie. There's been links in recent times to Tom Bell. I don't know too much about Sam Davidson. I think he's a forward, isn't he, from the VFL? And Ollie Hotton. So this is, again, the suggestion that West Coast are going to have um, Ollie Hotton potentially train with them or whatever. That, to me, does strongly imply West Coast are serious about Taj Hotton. So um, there you go. Interesting stuff. Finally, the Western Bulldogs. I think they could pretty much just use any kind of player that isn't tall. Uh, maybe a ruck if there's, a, like, you know, Dodson at 35, maybe, if he's available. But 17 and 25, I'd use on smaller type players, whether they be midfielders or general defenders, or even a small forward. And, um, you know, particularly at that 17, there's a number of smalls available there. Lockie Jakes as a prospect. Uh, that the, This draft gave them Christian Moraes. I'd imagine if they go Moraes, they don't go Hamish Do Davis, for instance. Tom Gross as well went undrafted in that first 30 as well, which is interesting. So he could be a good value selection at like 35 if he's still there. So there you have it, guys. Just a little bit of an, uh, an analysis and a reaction to Cal Toomey and Fox Footy's mock drafts. Sometimes Cal Toomey does do a late mail one, which means things he's here is in the next 24 hours or in the 24 hours between the two mocks he does another late mail draft um, which I may or may not react to at this point it might not be worth it but uh, keep an eye out for that I always enjoy Toomey's work Fox Footy also providing the goods with some good inside information but we're very close to that point where it's just time to grit our teeth and accept what's about to happen. But I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I'll be live on the True Footy YouTube channel both days and I'll be there um, immediately after to cover everything off and analyze how I think it went. So for now, let me know in the comments what you thought of these mocks and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.